Good evening and buenas tardes a todos. Ellie, roll call, please. Trustee McAvoy. Present. Trustee Wells. Here. Trustee Lawson. Here. Vice President Marquez. Here. President Diaz Locum. Present. Thank you. Um, again, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Bienvenidos a todos. Gracias por acompañarnos esta tarde. If you're here in person and would like to address the board, please fill out a card and hand it to Eliana. If you are joining us virtually, please fill out the Google Doc. Spanish translation is provided. Interpretación al español es disponi está disponible. Are there any changes to the agenda? Yes, I was wondering if we could move the bond program consent items up to after the approval of the agenda. So after 4.1, and that way uh, they can hop off if they'd like to do that. Okay, any other changes? Okay, um, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You may need to do a roll call vote. Right. Yeah. Yes. Roll call, please. Trustee McAvoy. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Lawson. Aye. Vice President Marquez. Aye. President Diaz Locum. Aye. Thank you. Do we have any oral communication? We do not. Thank you. Um, okay, so bond program consent agenda items. They were moved to um, under approval of agenda. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Or is it roll call? Okay, sorry. <laughs> roll call, please. Trustee McAvoy? Aye. Trustee Wells? Aye. Trustee Lawson? Aye. Vice President Marquez? Aye. President Diaz Loco? Aye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, and then um, item six, school and community reports, 6.1, update to the upcoming adoption of middle school history, social science materials. All right, Ms. Wolf will give an introduction and then I believe there's a presentation, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, and I'd like to introduce Sarah Collum, who many of you already know, who is our person of all trades, right? She um, oversees the history social studies for sixth or eighth grade. She is our literacy support for sixth or eighth grade. She is our communication with Sequoia High School District and the articulation and many more things. And so she's here tonight to talk to you about the history social studies adoption that has finally been recommended by our teachers. And so we have a presentation to show and Sarah's gonna be speaking up here at the podium. I'm gonna share my screen. Good evening. So for the middle school history social science adoption, the committee would like to um, recommend to the board that we go with the TCI history alive adoption. And this comes after a process where we looked at uh, five of the state adopted materials on the state adoption list, and we piloted three of them uh, throughout the pandemic. And when we returned in um, the blended hub learning situation, and then finally this year. So our factors for determining this recommendation are based on the student preference. We surveyed students continuously throughout this process, both after they would completed certain types of activities within a program, and then at the end of the program to get the overall sense of where they felt um, they were with this particular material. Uh, we found out from students that while adolescents in their recreational use of technology are very happy to have multiple tabs open and work across multiple devices, when it comes to their schoolwork, 
I like a very streamlined approach with their instructional materials. And they particularly called out TCI's design of the platform. The ease of navigation was um, important to them. And we got a lot of comments focused on that streamlining. So TCI has a one kind of page central um, look with a navigation menu on the side. Students felt that was the easiest one to use. And they kept telling us when the technology works as it should, when it's streamlined, we can focus on the actual task and we don't get frustrated with trying to make various components work. So students appreciated the universal access features in TCI and they liked some of the additional enrichment features like the geography challenges and games. Uh, they found that being able to adjust the text slightly helped some readers with comprehension, embedded glossaries, main idea highlighting within text. Those were all universal access tools that were appreciated by students and teachers. Um, in terms of the teacher preferences, uh, again, the reliability of the platform, connection, navigation, just the overall design that a publisher took were important. They liked that TCI, while had a sort of custom feature in terms of every lesson, has a downloadable slide deck. So teachers could manipulate that. It wasn't a static platform. And particularly important to our committee was that the um, Spanish components for the Spanish immersion program, that there be parity. We found that several publishers only had partial materials available in Spanish. So that was something we very much looked at. And we looked at the responsiveness of the publisher's tech support and um, the fact that TCI is local. They're just down the freeway in Palo Alto. Um, so we can find them easily if we have issues. That was another important aspect for the teachers. Um, those were sort of our, the main focus of our deliberation. Overall, um, I think from the first time we sat down in June of 2020, and we looked at the materials, having read the framework, the newly published framework, and looked at the emphasis the framework was placing on things like inquiry, citizenship, um, embedded literacy. When we looked at the programs, we're expecting the publishers to probably deliver a little bit more. Instead, we saw what we considered were a lot of copy cuts and pastes from older programs that had just been sort of jazzed up a little bit. We didn't really see any publisher taking on in a really efficient way, big designs, something that would equate to like the change with the science programs for the NGSS. So uh, that sort of, we worked through it, but that definitely was an ongoing theme throughout each of the trials and pilots. And so the committee would like to recommend TCI. Um, and they also said, we think we should have ongoing district teacher collaboration to find resources and to help us drive the project-based approach that we would like to see in social studies. Realizing that that's not gonna be done easily, that's gonna take several years to work on. So really, again, emphasizing resources that promote the citizen connections called for in the framework and keeping the past connected for students with the current events that they're interested in and are pursuing. So those were the main features of the adoption process. And the uh, committee did um, incredible work because it, in the beginning, when everything was online, we were adjusting to distance learning. They were also had the added task of using new materials. Yeah, any questions? So Sarah, the teacher collaboration, when they talked about that and how to collaborate and then create some type of project or something, did they indicate the timing how would that take place? 
we really didn't get into details with mm -hmm. that. It was sort of to be continued. The first okay. step would be the onboarding of everyone with the new materials. But they thought that we should, each grade level should start by seeing if they're teachers who want to come together to work with some, pro some programs, some project features, starting small, that would particularly emphasize the diversity in our community and speak to the history of our student groups. Um, so they gave a little bit of direction in that sense. Maybe a little similar to what we did in the past where, as you recall, there were grade levels at a time and you would release them or they would come after school and they would be paid a stipend to you know, go through that process and deliberate and collaborate and so forth. Yeah, I think they were very much looking for you know, support from the board, from the district in terms of what resources might be available to help with that process. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have any questions. I wanted to say thank you very much to you and the whole team. And we have the names here in the board packet. And I really appreciate it because I know there was a lot going on the last several years. And to add this on to their workload is, is you know, extraordinary. So just uh, thank you to all of, I, I don't know if some of them may be on the board meeting tonight, but if not, if you could pass that information on to them, that'd be great from the whole board, I know for sure. We're all shaking our heads. We really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I'll agree with that. Thank you. And to everybody that was on the committee. Um, you had answered one of my questions in email. I thought maybe you could share a little bit of that with the other board members. Um, I was asking around because um, our equity pol equity policy talks about curriculum and says that we want to adopt curriculum and instructional materials that accurately reflect the diversity among student groups. Could you share a little bit about what you, how you answered that in email? So in middle school, sixth and seventh grade are devoted to world history. So they um, essentially start with the beginnings of human history and um, go through into the mid 1700s. And they travel the world in that. So across the programs, across the standards, student study is um, very much focused on diverse groups. It is no longer sort of just European history that's studied. So they will um, study in depth all the major continents and the major early civilizations in sixth grade, and then the development of the modern empires in seventh grade. No, I don't have any questions. I was just going to say what Elisa said to thank um, everyone who worked on this, because I know it was a, not an easy time to be working on this stuff. So appreciate all the, the extra effort that went into that. I will post that message on. Thank you. Maria, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I just wanted to add that I really like having the student input. I think that's really important. So I wanted uh, again to echo my colleagues and saying thank you to everybody. And uh, I'm looking forward to the launch. Great, thank you. Um, and I just, my question would just be on, you mentioned the, um, project-based approach. Can you just elaborate a little more um, on that, please? So I think this feeds into the diversity question. Um, looking to really highlight um, certain areas of study um, and expand on the existing text with some projects for elaboration and enrichment. For example, a key one for the seventh grade would be Mesoamerican culture, um, looking at the ancient cultures there in more depth, looking at how they're connected to um, many of our families' histories and uh, ethnic backgrounds. Great, that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. You do such a wonderful job, and you've been doing it for, for many years now, and I really appreciate all your hard work and being one of the staff, well, we used to call it staff development, and now it's teachers on special assignment, but you've been one of the great leaders for years now. So thank you so much for all your hard work. I mean, we can, we can always call on Sarah for things if we don't understand. We can get Sarah up here right away. So thank you again.
which is great. Okay, um, moving along is 6.2, instructional support and primary teachers. All right, Liz, go ahead. So as, as was just mentioned, really, the reason that there are things moving forward right now in curriculum, in professional development, in instructional strategies, and in teacher support is due to our staff development team. Some of the rest of us are pulled off on writing plans and doing all sorts of crazy <laughs> stuff, but without our staff development team and the high quality and the experience and the dedication and the never say no attitude that they have to everything that they've been asked to do has made the difference in what's been happening in Redwood City. And so I want to echo the thanks to Sarah and introduce three more of our staff development team who are going to be talking about a professional development model that they um, have been working on this year, even in the midst of a pandemic. And so I'm going to introduce um, Mariela Talavera, Laura Pulido, and Anne Berhafa, who are going to be talking about how they've taken some training that they've received over the years and made it a Redwood City model for integrated thematic units that brings together all of the different initiatives that our district has been working on so that teachers don't see all of these different things as disparate. Oh, now we have to do this and now we have to do this. They see it as one professional development model in terms of the thematic units. But what they're also doing is they're sitting down with them side by side and helping them um, in their training. They do the modeling, they do um, coaching, they do the planning. And then now they're looking at evidence of student learning and doing kind of a lesson study around the, um, the lessons that are being designed in the thematic units. And we're super proud of this model and super proud that they've been able to do this given that there's no subs and, and they're being called to do testing and do all the things that are going on right now that they're persevering with this, um, this goal of providing high quality professional development to our staff. And so they're gonna talk about it tonight and it's gonna be a model that we continue to try to expand next year as well. So I'm going to um, invite our friends to come forward here online and I will go ahead and share my screen and you guys just say next slide when you're ready for me to do that. Okay, well, I was supposed to do a little introduction of Laura and Marielle and myself, but Liz um, just did that for us. So um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and go to the next slide and uh, Laura will take over. Uh Actually, I think it's going to be me. Yeah. Oh, no, that's okay. Hola, buenas noches a, a todos. Uh, good evening, everyone. So to give you a bit of background around what integrated units are, um, how better than hear it from a classroom teacher herself. So here we're going to watch a short video uh, of Mary Jane Vallejo describing this approach in her classroom. So Liz, can you please? Okay, here we go. Sound. And welcome to my classroom. So, what I'm going to tell you a little bit of how I use integrated units throughout my day, every day, all the time, to construct knowledge for the student to make it meaningful. Maybe we should put subtitles. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have subtitles because to do that, we have to upload it to YouTube. Thank you. Got it. Sorry. If Liz, if you, if you can mute. Can you? We're just wondering, is the audience able to hear the video? I don't think so. Okay. We are not on our end. Yeah. Are you able to hear it at the boardroom? Yeah. In the boardroom, we can hear 
Okay. Oh, oh that's good. Okay. Try this. Can we oh, try again? Yeah. Uh, we also have different strategies in our classroom. So we have some drum labels that we have. Uh, this one is a little bit in the middle of some of the strategies because sometimes we, you know, we obviously reference and come down. Yeah, we we can share the video with you so you can watch it later. But you know, for those who were able to hear the sounds, you can see how this teacher is truly invested in the process. And later on, I, I'm not sure, but uh, we will see some short clips of uh, some of our students thriving. But I don't know if we're going to have a problem with the sound, how we're going to do that. But yeah, we have to pair a few videos for you tonight. Uh, great. So starting this year, uh, we introduced a new training structure that allows TK to three teachers um, to receive PD in short increments. So for about two hours, and we did this, of course, to minimize the amount of time that teachers were out of the classroom, given that, you know, we want we wanted to return from the pandemic and be with our students as much as possible. Um, in these small sessions, uh, teachers learn new strategies in order to deliver content and, of course, to engage our students. They were able to reflect on their practice and they observed um, model lessons and in some cases even had the opportunity to co-teach. This year, we also updated our integrated units to better address our district's vision around equity and student empowerment, as well as the work that we're doing with NUA. We worked with 45 teachers across seven sites during our three cycles, as you can see here. And these teachers are teachers who had never been trained before in the use of integrated units or whose training was interrupted due to COVID. Um, in the spring, we also invited these teachers along with their already trained colleagues to participate in half day planning sessions. And this allowed us to share this new direction and all the new resources with them as well. Um, we also worked with our TK teachers to begin looking at the alignment with pre-K uh, for next year. So we had sessions every trimester. And we feel really good. We're closing the year on a high note. Um, we feel 
that we were able to meet with teachers on a regular basis. We feel that we had an impact on the quality of instruction, improvement in student engagement, and we foster collaboration among teachers. Through our work, we were able to connect and integrate different initiatives into our instruction where uh, teachers recognize the value of each of those initiatives and the role that they all play together in order to provide students with a well-rounded learning experience. Um, and especially given our context uh, for our multilingual learners. Next slide, please. Okay, so here you see um, an aligned social studies and science units document. This has TK through third grade, um, and this is, was created for our admins so that they could have a, a one size or one picture, you know, see it all together. But it has also helped us um, and teachers. We have these hanging in many of our, our um, school sites in the workrooms. And um, so for quick reference, so the teachers can see where they are now, where they're going next, um, and, and it helps them prepare. Um, and next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to watch a really short video. I hope you guys can hear the sound on it because it's super sweet. It's two um, first graders who are sharing what they've learned about sound and light from the first grade sound and light unit. Um, and this was done as a product of the amazing work of a new teacher we have at Roosevelt, Miss Kayla Kemale. So here's, oh, actually you have to play the video, Liz, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Let's see. Hi, One thing we've learned is that vibration can make sound. Like that, that's what it's in all of the But we also know that some sounds can be made from nature and some sounds can be man made. Sounds can be a low pitch and high pitch. Thank you. Okay. Well, even if you could, if there was an echo, you get the idea. And actually, we should show that to the kids because it's a perfect uh, <laughs> showing of sound and what sound can do, right? Um, also, <laughs> are the um, drawn labels for one of the one of the drawn labels for the sound unit, and um, some student writing, which is there's student writing after at the end of each unit. Next slide, please. And um, this is just a few samples of work that we have at our schools. You'll see um, that we have from left to right, we have um, a picture of a focus wall where much of the unit information is. However, unit information is usually found throughout the classroom, but we usually have a focus wall that has, you know, the essential questions and the topics and, and visuals, et cetera. Um, next to that is the drawn label, um, and following that is a research center. Down below is a new strategy that our teachers have been using called the, uh, the Dictato, right, or El Dictato? Yeah, did I say it? Okay. <laughs> um, and then following that is a cooperative strip paragraph, and then the homeschool connections, which are a part of every unit. And next slide. Oh, still me. Um, these photos are evidence of how the students learn about wonderful concepts in the content areas, um, such in units such as processes, processes that shape the earth, biodiversity and plant reproduction, weather, indigenous peoples, and patterns in the sky. Next slide, please. And so here we have some images of our immersion schools at Orion and Adelante Selby. Uh, and we see how teachers make um, cross-linguistic connections between English and Spanish in our Spanish immersion um, program. And it is also clear how integrated units um, allow for a print-rich environment where both language and content come alive. So we have another video. It's really cute. It's a kindergarten student giving an oral presentation at the end of their community unit. And I think she's going to talk about uh, what she wants to be when she grows up. Let's see, you know, if we can hear it. It's really cute. And it's in Mandarin, by the way.
the only way to stop that is to Okay. Um, let's see, is this my slide, you guys? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, in this slide, you'll see that there are some pre-K and TK students using dramatic play areas and discussing what they've learned using academic language as they talk about the content they've learned about. Next slide. Um, and this year, we also had the pleasure of working with two of our K2 SPED teachers. Uh, they really have seen the power of integrated units and the strategies. Um, they found that with some modifications, they are able to use them in their instructional context um, and have excellent results. So this particular strategy is called a sentence patterning chart. And with several sessions and several scaffolding through a series of lessons, students were able to write an independent sentence at the end of the week. The students were uh, felt extremely successful and so did the teacher. Next slide, please. And as we mentioned earlier, um, we began embedding all our new learnings from NUA and other initiatives into our units. And here we see how circle maps from NUA and graphic organizers with some of the integrated unit work we've been doing for some time uh, really complement each other, right? They help students define timelines here using a circle, circle map. And then they apply those timelines to the academic content as well as to their own lives. Next slide. Here we see another NUA strategy called View and Capture, where students watched an informational video and used a graphic organizer to jot down the main points. Students then reprocess that information whole group onto a categorical matrix, which is an integrated unit strategy, where language supports were embedded, such as those sentence frames. They then took it into writing. Next slide. We have also been integrating many of the engaging reading strategies from NUA like key vocabulary prediction. Uh, we incorporate that with some of our purposeful read alouds as well as some of our benchmark text. Um, and we also use thinking maps along with our chants and language function walls as we can see here. Next slide, please. And here we had another video. <laughs> Anyways, but what, so, um, the video shows how um, two second grade students at Adelante Selby are using an NUA strategy that's called who, what, when, where, and how it's a wrap. And they are using that strategy for uh, retaining for understanding after they learned about producers and consumers. So they did a drawn label, which is that uh, image that you see uh, on the left, and then they um, to retain for understanding, engage in this uh, wrap, in this strategy. So we can see, I mean, we're not able to see the video now, but we can say that the two approaches uh, fit together very well to uh, support uh, student learning and engagement. Next slide. Okay. And so um, each of the uh, six integrated units uh, per grade level has a suggested thematic planner. So here is a sample of one of the thematic planners where uh, teachers can find all the uh, useful information they need to, to help guide their planning. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's live links, uh, so uh, resources are easily found. And also you can see that in the middle section, we find some of the, the new learnings around culturally responsive strategies. So this year we added that resource there, the culturally responsive strategies to integrate. Next slide. And a next step that we've started trying out this spring is this cycle of lesson design. We selected a team of teachers at two of our sites um, and teachers collaborated to create a lesson that reflects all our new learning, such as the phases of learning, where we see here priming, processing and retaining for understanding. They incorporate reflection and formative assessments. Uh, teachers then taught the lessons in their classrooms and then we got back together where they had a chance to reflect on their experience teaching the lesson. 
And also, of course, on student engagement. We also had the opportunity to analyze some of their student work samples. So you can see some of those here. Next slide, please. And here's a quote from one teacher. We received very positive feedback. Um, we'll give you a moment to read that on your own. So we hope that next year we are able to create a system where um, these lesson design cycles occur regularly and during teacher's workday. Uh, one layer that we'll be adding, though, is peer observation, where after creating the lesson, they'll be able to observe each other, teach the lesson so that they can come back and reflect um, on each other's learnings and each other's ways of approaching the, the instruction. Uh, we hope to include the lesson design cycles in our already uh, planned cycle uh, PDs so that um, we can truly become professional learning communities that way. Next slide, please. And one of the many resources uh, we created this year is this ebook that um, compiles all of our integrated unit strategies. It has videos, photos and highlights for each of the strategies, as you can see here. Um, we also uh, included ELD and LPAC uh, connections, as well as NUA and SEL strategies throughout the book. So you can see all those listed uh, on these two pages here. Next slide. And also last year, uh, we were very fortunate uh, to have worked with a professional and award-winning uh, podcast producer. Uh, Dennis Maxwell, and he helped us um, create these uh, podcast-based mini units that celebrate diverse voices and diverse cultures here from, from the Bay Area. And so we uh, used audio clips as text and NUA strategies throughout the units to engage our students. And Dennis also worked um, with a group of um, newcomer kids uh, you know, our newcomer kids in a um, uh, storytelling class after school since uh, the last mini unit, it's the one here uh, called um, This Is My Story. So this, this uh, mini unit highlights some of their uh, migration stories, which are very, very powerful to hear and to learn about. Next slide. Can I ask real quick on that last slide? Mm -hmm. um, would, would we have access to hear some of those migration stories? Oh, yeah. If, so if we get this presentation, we'll be able to link to it. Or, or you can just send it to us separately. Yes, absolutely. That, that would be great. Th thank you very much. I would yeah, love yeah. to. There's also links to them in the teacher's newsletter. Yeah, that, so if you oh, go back right, to right, those right, and find course. them there, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, send that, all these yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have those. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Hey, um. So finally, so next year um, for TK, we're going to be having five classrooms and I will be working very closely with all five classrooms. We're going to have one Mandarin immersion, one Spanish immersion, one bilingual and two English only at the moment. That's what we know. Um, and we will be developing our TK units even further. And we will be looking at the alignment between pre-K, TK and K as there's similar content. Um, we're going to make sure that content is not duplicated, but enhanced. Um, and uh, before I go on to Laura, I just want to give a shout out to my colleagues, Laura and Mariella, for the enormous amount of work that they do. Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you how hard they work on all of the planners and how important they are to the work the teachers do. They really make it easier, nothing's easy in teaching, but they make it easier for teachers to do this hard work and an important work. So kudos to my team. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Anne. Um, Thank and, you. and the same is true about you. Absolutely. Um, you truly are a team and um, not even close. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> The teachers appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so as Anne has said, we have been extremely busy this year and our plans for next year then are to continue with the pre-K and TK alignment, as Anne said. 
We also hope to work with the new teachers or new hires at the beginning of the year to have sort of a short onboard meeting so that when they meet their new team, they have a little bit of background. Um, and then of course, we're going to continue with our PD cycles where we're going to include this lesson design piece into it. We also hope that we can incorporate half day planning sessions throughout the year. Um, this year we did it in the spring and um, we believe that teachers need opportunities throughout the year in order to be better prepared. Um, and in order for that collaboration and that reflection piece to take place. Um, so a calendar hopefully will be created soon. We thank you so much for your attention tonight. Muchas gracias. Um, Muchas gracias. Yeah, probably have some questions. Are there any questions or comments? Well, I want to say uh, thank you very much. This was a wonderful presentation, and I look forward to getting a copy so we can watch the videos. <laughs> uh, thank you for putting those in there. We're just, you know, we're trying to do this hybrid approach with our board meetings, and we're still working out some of the kinks, but it does allow everybody to participate. So anyway, um, thank you for that. And, uh, you know, I know that, you know, I've been out to some of the school sites over the years and uh, also the last couple of months seeing the SEAL and the NUA and some of the other strategies that we're using. But it was really nice to get a kind of a comprehensive overview from you because of course, when we go into classrooms, we sort of see bits and pieces of it, not, you know, not as comprehensive as you just shared with us tonight. So um, thanks to the three of you for all of your work. I know how hard the whole staff development team works. Um, and I really appreciate all the information. And I, I'm so grateful to so many of our teachers and our administrators and others at school sites that are willing to try some of these new things. And I think what's happening, of course, what we're seeing is success builds success. So they begin to see how their students respond and the growth that they're seeing in their students in so many ways, whether it be social, emotional or academic or what have you. So um, you know, really thank you for sticking with it. I know that many of you have been here for years and plugging away and, um, you know, none of this is easy. It doesn't happen overnight. There's no magic bullet with any of this. And so really appreciate um, just everything that you're doing. Um, so thank you. Thank you. I, I agree, um, and and Marielle and uh, Laura, thank you so much for presenting tonight and showing us. Um, we can't wait to see the videos. I agree, um, but uh, no, the the slides and the information here, um, these strategies are really exciting to see them getting implemented and brought in. Um, the ability, you know, the the engagement that that brings to the students, but also the sort of just incorporating the differentiation right into all of the the throughout the day lesson. Um, you know, it's, it's great. Um, I think that it's, these are wonderful things that we're bringing to our students. It's great to see how many teachers were able to take advantage of it too. 45 is a great number. Um, this is just me not being totally aware, but like, are we, we're doing the same thing for upper grades too, right? Or are there, is there? Okay. Having a Got sound it. issue. <laughs> Right, because they're more subject based. Okay. But they, our team definitely is working with them in terms of, of the strategies, but it's not really an integrated as much approach as it is. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, but that's the that. So these are the integrated ones. Okay. Cool. Um, that's that's outstanding. I look forward to hearing, um, you know, all our staff development plans for the next year as we work through the LCAP um, and get ready for the budget. Um, and then I, I guess, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if. I had asked on Monday, on Tuesday, if we could sort of just get a reminder of like, what are all the, um, the we do have it and okay. they are multi-funded and um, we have, a to this, ha this has a list right there. She has it. <laughs> yeah, she made the mistake. I made the mistake of asking the staff development team to write down, just jot down a few notes of things you're working on. So I like, I have like 20 pages of things because they're so busy. <laughs> But they are there's 11 of them at the current time, and we have added a few more for next year in terms of the educator effectiveness grant. We haven't hired them yet, but there's 11 currently who will be continuing next year who are multifunded either out of title funding, some are LCAP funding, some are grant funded, right? And I have that breakdown by by person. Um, 
but they each have an area of expertise, but I've asked them to, to multitask and they have added more to their repertoire. And so, because we didn't have people who were involved as much in literacy. And so now we've got a couple of people who are doing that. We had people who um, needed to support the SEL work. And so now they've taken on that, right? And so they are, Sarah has been adding literacy to her history of social studies, right? So each of them have more than one thing that they do. Um, and they're expert at all of them. They're an amazing group. So I, the level of detail that you want, I can send you more information in terms of. No, that, that's perfect. And just even getting the reminder of the numbers that are there is something that um, I wish I could walk around with it in my head all the time, but I do forget it. So I, that's, that was the, the reminder I wanted to uh, get. Thanks. Uh, I don't have any questions. I just want to say thank you to Anne and Laura and Mariella. Um, you guys are a strong team and I really appreciate um, everything that you've done and really looking forward to getting the presentation so I can see the videos too and the um, the podcast as well. So yeah. that's great. Thank you very much. And I would also echo my thanks to all of you. Um, and I would also like to thank John Baker because he has supported the staff development idea uh, from the very first, I always believe that it's uh, great to have that extra help because teachers just have so much to do. And you guys have done a tremendous job. I really like the podcasts when I listen to them. Um, I think they send us those links before and they were really, really good. So. Um, uh, you guys are doing great, great work. I also really like the fact that you are doing this onboarding for new teachers, because that's always my question. We've trained all these people, but what about the new ones? So um, again, thank you very much. You guys are rock stars, as Dennis would say. So keep doing what you're doing and uh, thank you for all you've done. And for me, um, same, um, I appreciate your willingness to work as a team. And of course, you're very appreciative of, of each other. Um, and of course, um, like one of the teachers, the, the one screen that we read, um, she mentioned collaboration, sharing, and thoughtful to create lesson plans. So of course, that's what you guys are doing, working with our teachers. Um, so again, thank you very much for all the work that you guys do for Rivet City. And I'd like to add, you know, when Mariela and Laura came and showed us the video, she, they showed us, they put together the power, a PowerPoint for Liz and myself to just to give us a flavor of what they've been doing this year. I did not expect this type of work to be taking place, you know, during this pandemic. So they went out there and had the initiative to go forward. And Staff development is a really important thing because, you know, in any normal business, you're out and you go out for your staff development. I, you know, as my person at my other half at home gets that a lot and takes his staff out a lot to do things. We don't get that opportunity. So we have these great people that work for us in staff development to do this. And I'm impressed with the collaboration the reflection, and I'm really interested in the peer observation once you start doing that next year. Let me know. I, I, I'd i like to go, but I'd like to like be in the background because they see the superintendent coming in. They're going to go freak out. So, um, and it's not to do that. I just want to, I just want to observe. I'm not going to critique or anything. I just want to observe it because that is the biggest thing that superintendents we talk about is exactly what they're doing right now. The collaboration of, and, and, creating lessons together. And then they'll uh, one of them will present a lesson, the other one will watch the lesson, and then they'll critique it with one another. And that's exactly what you're doing and what we're hoping as educational leaders that that ha takes place. And you've, and you've started it, which is fantastic. I was just, when Liz says we're going to meet with Laura and Mari, Ella, and I know, you, um, Anne, you were not with us at the time, but kudos to you too for the many years that you've been working in this arena, but I was just totally thrown back because this is what you want to see. This is the, the epitome of what teaching should look like. 
instead of being in your classroom all by yourself preparing and you have you know different levels levels of students this is what it should be and i i thank you so much for bringing this to the forefront i do read um you know every week that liz puts together i used to call it a newsletter but i don't know what i call it anymore <laughs> and, and i and i go in there and i I go in there and I watch the podcast and I watch the and I, I watch the videos. It's amazing. Um, I have not shared it with my colleagues because I think they're going to want to steal some of it. But uh, so I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to see, and it'll probably be next, of course, next year if we're more so. Which thumbs up, we will be in the classrooms more so. Have them come in and really look at this and look at what you're doing. This is great. This is what it should be. This is exactly what. My hats off to each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You know, Sarah, Sarah has been with me back when I was in Liz's position and, and working with uh, staff development. So was Anne. Uh, I think Mariella was. I'm not sure Laura was there yet, but um, thank you, Laura, for, for joining us and, and coming out of the classroom and all that. I really appreciate it. It's great. It's, it's really good. You should be proud. I'm very proud. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item nine, consent items. Can I get up? You're, you're welcome to stay on for the rest of the board meeting, but you can jump off if you'd like. But thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can I get a motion to approve the consent items? I'll move to approve the consent items. Second. Roll call, please. Tracy McAvoy. Aye. Tracy Wells. Aye. Tracy Lawson. Aye. Vice President Marquez. Aye. President Diaz Silva. Aye. Action items 10.1. Recommendation um, regarding adoption of resolution 36, authorizing electronic meetings of the Board of Trustees during a state of emergency pursuant to government code section 54953. You all know what this is. <laughs> I'll make a motion and it's so great to see you, Maria, tonight. <laughs> Welcome back. Second. Great. It's great to see you back. Thanks. Roll call, please. Trusty McAvoy? Aye. Trusty Wells? Aye. Trusty Lawson? Aye. Vice President Marquez? Aye. President Diaz Locum? Aye. 11.1 11 .1, report for, from board members and superintendent. Want to start? I'll go first. Um, I just have, let's see, we had a workforce housing meeting um, and we'll be having a, a closed session um, coming up for that uh, next, next meeting. Week, next meeting. Um, and then um, I went to the retirement celebration and that was really, really nice. Um, it was great to see everyone there and um, everyone, Eliana and everyone who put it together did a really great job. So I loved that and that's all I have. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. It was a great event. Um, it was really nice to spend time with, um, you know, the staff that was retiring from custodians, bus drivers, instructional assistants, administrators, and teachers. Um, really, uh, it was nice to meet everyone. Um, also, there was a music festival at MIT on Friday. Uh, I had to leave early, but I did get to hear the cross middle school performances. That was, that was really, that was awesome to hear because they didn't get to do a concert for um, their family, so it'll be recorded, and uh, hopefully we'll get a copy of that. And then yesterday we had the LCAP meeting, um, reviewed all three goals. I guess we gave the final, you know, last little bit of advice as a committee, and um, the next step will be that it'll be coming to the board in uh, the last two meetings in June. In June. So uh, let's see, I did some of the same things as Janet and Mike. Um, I did want to just call out the retirement party and say thank you very much to Ellie, Evelyn, and Jorge. I think the three of you probably did most of the work. If there's anyone else, thank you as well. Um, it was such a nice event, and I know uh, the retirees really appreciated it. And I appreciated it because it's so nice just to, to really thank them all. Um, so thanks for that. And then I also was able to go to the musical event. I came in in the second half. <laughs> Um, 
And it was just amazing. I mean, the students were so good and they were coming from all different schools. Many of them had not played together before. It was pretty clear how good the, mu the music teachers were to get that to happen and how hard the, the students had worked all year. So that was great. And I look forward to seeing the videos. And it sounds like um, they're going to put together videos, both of the mariachi day as well as that. And so we'll be seeing those at a later date. Um, and then I know that Liz, after we left, you uh, thanked Carol McNamara, who's leaving us after, what, 37 years of teaching music in our district. And so I just want to publicly thank her at this board meeting um, for all of her years of musical service. Just truly, truly amazing. Um, and she was busy prepping for the musical event, so she didn't come to the retirement party, but she deserves a lot of thanks. And I know you, you had gotten her flowers and all sorts of stuff. So thanks for that. Um, let's see, I did meet with one of the parents on the food committee. Um, I think they're probably meeting with board members, just making the rounds and chatting about things that they're learning from other school districts. And so uh, it was really just kind of a listen. And I think they're going to try to put together a panel um, that they would invite us to probably in August or September when we're back at school. And the panel would be some of the nutritional directors from other school sites that are doing different things. So just a learning opportunity. Um, and then uh, John and Maria and I, we went to the two by two by two. Maria, why don't I let you talk about that if you'd like to, um, about what we talked about. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, the city called the meeting, although we do have them regularly, and in part, it was to let us know that we do have some youth, some middle school and high schoolers who are um, riding bicycles around town. And of course, we want them to be riding bicycles and, and uh, you know, being outside and all of that. But some of them are beginning to get in trouble. And so we brainstormed a little bit on how we can proactively help the students um, help with education, uh, maybe contact parents where needed, that sort of thing. So um, there'll be some follow-up um, over the next couple of weeks in the summer, and there's a small team, and we've got a couple of our staff that are on that team helping out. And um, I think there was a lot of conversation that for those that are um, legally, you know, doing the good things on a bicycle, we want to encourage that. And then for those that are... Um, Going outside the bounds, they also need some some help as well. So uh, that'll be coming forward. And Maria, feel free to add to that um, as well. And I'm done. No, I think you covered it quite well. And that's all I had. And as for me, same thing. Um, the only um, thing that I attended was a retiree um, event, which again was great. Thank you. All mine were mentioned. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so item 12.1, information on the San Mateo County Investment Fund. Are there any questions? Thank you. Um, any correspondence? I did receive uh, some emails from parents um, having to do with um what they want to have at their school sites you know where the tk or some other program and then um also um an email from a kip parent that is not happy with um the after school placement there Um, any other um, business possible for other business suggested items? So I just wanted to remind you that a um, couple things. On Friday is the ribbon cutting for Taft. You all have that, right? Okay, just wanted to correct. That's what my uh, right. That's what my calendar says. It's Taft. Yeah, and then uh, for. The June 15th meeting, there'll be a closed session at five o'clock. And then the regular meeting will start at six. And that regular meeting, why it's starting at six, 
is um, we uh, not only will have information regarding the bond from um, TBWH, and also uh, Blake will be coming to talk. And then after that, uh, at seven o'clock, we'll go into a regular session, which the main item for that is um, the North Star Moving Forward report. So I wanted to make sure you have that on. That's the 15th, June 15th. A meeting on, do we have one on Monday? The, the Monday? Right, that's June 13th. That's June 13th for us. Okay. That's with me. Yes. And what, what time is that? Nine o'clock. Okay. And you'll let us know where right. that is. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking, yeah, nine? Yeah. Nine to about 12 and then. Okay, great. And then can you remind me, when do we put together the calendar for next school year? Just so we can start to get those dates on our. For the new school year coming the 22 23 we will try and work on those before we leave. so i actually evelyn and i will have a meeting next week um <laughs> because we'll start working on those calendars on school assignments and committee assignments so we will try to wrap all that up and then we'll have a meeting with superintendent baker to get his okay and hopefully um i don't know whether you want this information to be placed on the june 29th board meeting or you would rather just wait that we present this meeting or Evelyn present this information to you in the first board meeting in August? The August well, 10th. Board. Yeah, I'd rather at least the calendar dates. I don't think we need all the ass assignments, I suppose. Well, I, I don't know. I'd like the calendar dates just because things will start booking up over the summer. So we want to make sure if there's any, you know, we know the regular Wednesdays, but if mm -hmm. there's anything extra or if things have moved, that would be helpful. I think so. Don't you think? I mean, it, it would be for me. So, I think for the board meetings, we could do that. And yeah. I think for the, the other, other ones, I think it's common practice yeah. that it comes first as a discussion item in yeah. August, and yeah. then it comes back as a consent item for further approval. Yeah. And, and even if they're draft at the 29th, and then we, I, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but it, it's helpful. It would be helpful for me just to plan. I was going to say the same thing, even if it's just a draft, just so we can mark it down would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. I'll work with Evelyn. Um, she's going to be taking over yeah. the last two board meetings. So <laughs> we will make sure to agendize it so it comes to you as a discussion item. Yeah. So that you can good. discuss it and then for further approval in August. Right. Yeah. Um, so 15.1 changes to the board agenda. Are there any? So um, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. I feel like it's always me. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Roll call. Trustee McAvoy. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Lawson. Aye. Vice President Marquez. Aye. President Diaz Locum. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Good night, Maria. Good night, Maria. Good night. Thanks, guys. Yeah, nice to see you. See you too.